to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. We've been pitching a tent here to kick off, to start our new series entitled, Now is Not the Time. Everybody say that. Say, now is not the time. There's some things in a believer's life you just don't have time for. And since time, Brother Lee, is our greatest human commodity, you don't have time to waste. And so there's some stuff you just don't have time for. I don't have time for negativity. I don't have time for stupidity. I've done enough of that by myself. I don't have time to go backwards. Anybody understand this? I don't have time to start doubting God now. I need to... I, I want to believe God like I've never believed before. Now was not the time to be faithless. Now was not the time to question what he's saying. There's some stuff you just don't have time for. For some of y'all, you ought not have time for worry no more. You've been doing that your whole life. It hasn't produced much at all for you. All it's produced is early ulcers, gray hair, and missing sleep. Listen, say this with me. Say, now is not the time. We're going to be studying biblically, Pastor Charles Jackson, several statements of Jesus and the scriptures as they teach us things we don't have time for. I want to look, peer, peep, and peruse the confines of Luke chapter 4, verse 18. This is my second discourse from this same text, and I want to lift this one for you to consider this morning after we whisper a word of sacred supplication. Heads are bowed. My mind belongs to you, Jesus, so think with it. My tongue belongs to you, God, so talk with it. My body belongs to you, Master, so stand in it. Treat me all day long, God, like you would a pretty instrument. Play me in any key that makes you happy. Treat me the day long, oh God, like you would a puppet on a string. You be the master and I'll be the puppet. But God, I pray today for spiritual freedom, spiritual liberty, and deliverance that comes along with it. I pray, oh God, for the young man who is watching me online right now who is shackled and bound. God, hear these words in heaven and make them real on earth. Loose here, Satan. You thought you could keep him, but he's a purchased possession. Father, I pray for those who are shackled and bound to worry and whose fruit is anxiety and stress. Today, oh God, I pray a prayer on earth that I pray is finding the corridors of heaven. And I pray it fervently. Lose here, devil. Let their spirits be free. Father, I pray for spiritual deliverance in this house. A freedom that even hell would have to say there has to be a God somewhere. Do it for your glory, God. Do it for your glory, God. Do it for your glory, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray these prayers. Amen. Listen to what Jesus says in Luke 4, 18. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year 
of the Lord. Look at that C clause, would you please? To preach the deliverance to the captives. Say amen for that part of that verse. Grab a neighbor by the hand. Hopefully it's somebody you don't mind touching and being near. Look them in the eye and say, neighbor, I need to be at church. I'm glad to be here. The preacher needs your prayers. All of your amens. This morning sermon subject. Now is not the time to be bound. You touch three people and tell them now is not the time to be bound. Now is not the time to be bound. Now is not the time to be bound. The grass withers, the flower fades, the word of our God shall last and stand forever. Thank you, ushers, you may retire. For those who are readers who like growth in the faith, let me begin this morning with a book written by Dr. Neil T. Anderson. It's entitled The Bondage Breaker. Neil T. Anderson writes this book in the early 1990s and it's not published until the early 2000s yet. For those who are believers in Jesus Christ, in my mind, it's a must read. Neil T. Anderson takes the time to chronicle the fact that the door of the church and her freedoms remains open. That until the rapture happens, that door is and will remain open. He said, but the problem with the people in the house where the door is, is that many of them are in the house, but remain in bondage. Neil T. Anderson said that if you wanted to look at a modern day prison, do not visit the Federal Bureau or the state incarceration camps. He said, peep into the halls of a local church. Neil T. Anderson said many are in bondage to worry. Some are in bondage to hatred. Others are in bondage to bitterness. While some are even in bondage to other chemical addictions that's been ex socially accepted. He said that more people in church are living in bondage sometimes than folk who are outside of the church. He said, though the door of the church has been made open, many sit in the hallowed sanctuary halls and we are bound to various addictions and various stuff. He said, wait, let me go deeper, that some are even in bondage to generational elements, that the same thing that bound your daddy binds you. But Anderson gives a word of liberation. He said that if the door has been opened, it takes only an idiot not to decide to walk through when admission is already free. Y'all, it didn't make sense to me until last summer. You know, it takes a while sometimes for the intellectual light to come on. You can hear something audibly, but until you can heed it spiritually, it makes no sense. Pastor Charles Jackson, every summer for one week, I give Dory a break from the kids and me. Uh, I know she's sick of them and tired of me. Are you listening to me? So what I do is I give her a break. I give her a credit card and say, go wherever you want, and I take the kids to be with me. I lay the rules down before we get started started. I'm going to say stuff one time. I don't want to give no long speeches. You can have what you want to have, but do what I've asked you to do. I'm scared of them. They just don't know it. That's why I'm giving y'all this discourse right now. 
because they're not here at this service. Are you listening to them? So I told them, I said, y'all, can we can ride what you want to ride, slitter bonds, six flags, whatever. But when I say it's time to go, let's go. If I say sit, that means down right now. Are you listening to me? Y'all, we go to the zoo in Lafayette, Louisiana. We just pull off the freeway. We see the sign, say zoo, and we say, let's go kick it. We walk into the zoo, and they got a lion in the zoo behind a cyclone fence. Come here right quick. That lion can tear that down, but he does not know that. To make matters worse, we go back there in the back of part of it where they got monkeys, chimpanzees, and one gorilla. Y'all, he is behind a cyclone fence. You're going to catch it in a minute. And my mind is saying that gorilla can tear that down. But that's not the one that bothered me. Pastor Albert Moore, we went way in the back where the giraffes were. This giraffe, 20 feet tall, Gene Kyle, legs 8 feet tall. There is no gate around him. I'm like, baby, let's go so we can get home. Are y'all following me? Because I don't need a giraffe chasing me. But the zookeeper came out and was feeding the giraffe. And we were looking and we heard a young man say, a little boy asked the zookeeper, why doesn't he just run away? Because he can just step over this ditch that's keeping him in. Jawanda Bryant, that was a six foot ditch between me and this giraffe. And the giraffe wouldn't leave. The little white boy asked the zookeeper, why doesn't he just leave? And the zookeeper quit feeding the giraffe and told the little boy oh we got him when he was young and so since he couldn't jump it back then he doesn't he can jump it now he's free he just doesn't know it come here ladies and gentlemen because I want to declare to you a freedom that's already been paid for on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross it was that day ladies and gentlemen God purchased our liberty and now is not the time to live in bondage. It's Jesus talking and as he talks in Luke 4, Luke 4 18 he makes it clear as he walks into the temple that things are about to be different because there's a new king in town. I am so glad ladies and gentlemen for me Jesus is just not some ordinary man. He is the master. He is God. He is Christ. He is Lord. He is Savior. He is Rabbi. He is Teacher. He is my light. He is my strength. He is my help. He is my peace. He is my joy. He is my victory. I need somebody in here who just loves him with all of your heart to lean over and tell somebody he's everything to me. Ladies, and gentlemen he says to us listen carefully the spirit of the Lord is upon me the Ruach is resting on me I have the Holy Ghost is what Jesus says but Ruth here is what he declares I've got good news for poor people let me pause right there because some folk are economically in poverty but you are not poor can I just pause right here there's a difference between being in poverty and being poor. Our ancestors were in poverty, but they were not poor. Our ancestors were in poverty, but they were not poor. Our ancestors were in poverty, but they were not poor. Poverty is an economic status, Coach Gamble, but to be poor is a poor self-perception of who you are and what you have. You may not have a lot, but if you treasure what you got, you can be rich while you ain't got nothing. I wish I had a prayer in church this morning. You don't have to drive a Mercedes to feel like you got something because it's not what you drive, it's what's driving you that matters. You can live in a sugar shack, but if it's clean, smell good, and it's your house, it can become a happy home. Is there anybody in here that ain't never been rich 
things, but you ain't never missed nothing. What well, God has taken care of you your whole life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's talking to me. He then says, I've come to heal the brokenhearted. Listen to me carefully. You know what I discovered, Deacon Brelstrup? You can have a broken heart and not even know it. I look at the American Heart Association and do you know that this is a disease that they have locally recognized? Uh -huh. It's cardiomyopathy. It's where your heart has been shattered by exterior things that causes interior hurt. You can be hurt by one of your children that you didn't raise and taught them well and that joker acts like they've been raised in Babylon. You can be hurt in a relationship where somebody told you they loved you but they were just playing with your emotions because their body was with you but their mind was on the other side of town. You can be hurt through disease and infirmity but can I give y'all the first official shout of the morning? God loves to be near hurting people with a messed up cracked up heart because what others have broken the Lord in heaven restores. I need about 10 of y'all in here who came to Jesus just like you were weary, wounded, and sad. But when he got through restoring you, he gave you a joy that was unspeakable. He then moved to say to us, he is about to set at liberty those who are held captive. Ladies and gentlemen, the declaration from Jesus Christ this morning to the people of God, even in his day, was this. You will not follow me and be bound. You will not follow me and wear satanic handcuffs of doubt and disbelief. You will not follow me in shackles. The shackles are going to fall. The freedom is already here. You will pray free. You will live free. You will worship free. You will not be in bondage to your past. You will not be in bondage to any demonic influence. You you will not be in bondage to any unholy habit. I don't know who this is for, but I'm shouting myself. You will not be in bondage to worry. You will not be in bondage to anxiety. You will not be in bondage to other people. Forget what they got to say. You might want to hear what God has to say. People are going to always have something to say about you. But if they didn't wake you up, put food in your body, and put health and strength in you, you can let them talk all day long. You will not be in bondage to the curses in your family. You will not be in bondage to anything if you believe. And I need about a hundred of y'all in here who can hear God saying you are free to go. The charges have been dropped. The case has been dismissed. You have been set free in the person of Jesus. Can I throw this in right quick? You can tell when you're around free people because they don't worry about what other people have to say about them. So this is just for the free people. Tap your neighbor that ain't said amen and tell them I really don't care about what you think about me. I don't really care what you're going to have to say about me. I don't care how you feel about me. I'm too free to let your thoughts bind me. I'm not going to let you rent space in my mind because the door is open and I am free in the Holy Ghost. Touch three people and tell them now is not the time to be bound. Now is not the time. Now is not the time. Now is not the time to be bound. Now is not the time to be. I refuse to be on lockdown. Now is not the time for me to worry. Now is not the time for me to doubt. Now is not the time for me to quit. Now is not the time for me to panic. Now is not the time for me to sink. Now is not the time for me to give up. Now is not the time for me to be negative. Now is not the time. Oh, I feel God in here. I need about a hundred free people to shout, Now is not the time! <laughs> Pastor Adolf, how does this freedom work? What's given even in the text that enriches and empowers us? Can I, can I show it to you right quick? 
Number one, we have the decree of the king himself. Everybody say, we have the decree of the king. Okay, I'm going to say something that some people may find offensive, but don't, don't be mad at me. Wait until next week. <clears throat> listen carefully. Watch this. This is going to be deep, but it's kind of offensive. So just listen. Go, just take it to heart like you would medicine. Listen, you ready? The only way for a Christian to live bound is to accept it. You can't blame your mama. You can't blame your daddy. You can't blame the people that you were raised around. If we decide to live in bondage, it's because it's our decision. Did you hear that? Jesus shows up on the scene. And it is important, Pastor Celestine, for us to cognitively really realize that he is not here to plant a church. We keep thinking Jesus is a church planter when he is a government shifter. He is not here to win an election. He is here because he is the selected, not the elected. God, I'm about to show up. Well, my saints, because I'm about to have church. But listen, he is not trying to win a seat in the White House by tweeting. He is here because he gave the bird her song. He is not here to say, I'm going to plant a church on the corner. He is starting a new government. And in his government, he is the king. And for those of you who are not familiar with how kingdoms work, here is how it goes down. There is no senate. There is no no house of representatives there is no democracy there's only theocracy the words of the king become the laws of the land so what the king just says is the new law and the new king says are you ready you are free okay you miss your shot Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me back up, back up, back up. Come back, come back. Because I want you to really understand. Uh, for those of you who are old school, who don't have a PlayStation, a game station, you don't know nothing about none of that. <clears throat> okay, good. You with me. That means you're old. You're over 52. Pay attention. In our day, we played outside. Hide in the Bebo. See, that young folk don't have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> One Mississippi, two Mississippi. You understand? Come here, come here, come here. Uh, uh, we, we play stuff like jacks. Throw them little metal things down there. Work your onesies. Your twosies. Can you hang? Your threesies. If you can really talk trash, your foursies. You gotta swipe it. Come here, come here, come here. But that was another game that was called Simon Says. And the only way to win is to watch the watchword Simon. See, forget what they say. You can get kicked out the game if you move in. If they say take one big step, you take it, you out. You got to watch it because Simon has to say it. Christians are playing a new game, but it's not a game. It's all God. And it's not called Simon says. It's called the Savior says. The Savior says you're free. The Savior says you're healed. The Savior said you're blessed. The Savior said, you're my child. The Savior said, you belong to me. The Savior said, I hear your prayers. I need 200 of y'all to tell somebody, my king says I'm free. Okay, watch this. Uh, Deacon Ledet, uh, Pastor, Pastor Sheldon Wilts, uh, I, I try to maintain good health, sometimes stuff gets me. Oh, they hold it. Hey, y'all. They weren't even paying attention. Let me just change. Hey, y'all. When I'm on the road, you know, people offer me to eat stuff. And since no one's watching me, sometimes I'm tempted. So I try to guide, guard, and govern my own behavior. You understand? And so sometimes I eat stuff I shouldn't. And then when I do, I make sure I go to the gym to work it off. Okay. <laughs> Stay with me. The other day, I went to the gym. 
And I saw this lady who used to be huge. Y'all, she was slim. It was her. She was on the treadmill, Pastor Jackson and Exeter. I walked by, she said, you ain't going to speak? I'm like, how you doing? You understand? Sister Sales, I don't know, it's her. I'm not being, you know, up in it. I'm just saying, she lost so much weight. So I said, oh my God, it's you. She said, yeah, hey, how you doing? I said, God bless you, you look healthy, you look great. I said, what did you do? Did you have surgery? Stop, quit judging me, just listen to the story. Did you have the surgery? She said, nope, I went to church. I said, I, I, I don't understand. She said, I heard the words of Jesus tell me that I don't have to accept the obesity of my mama and my dad. So I decided to change because the Lord told me I could change. Yo, if she could believe it for herself, why can't we believe the fact we're free too? I need about a hundred of y'all in here who will say I'm free and I don't care what the enemy tries to throw at me to bind me. I am free in the Holy Ghost because my king said I'm free. Number two, watch the second shift. It happens because the king makes a decree. You hear that? Secondly, we, we, we have the duty of the kinsman. For you to be free is one thing. For you to live the freedom you have is another. It is possible, listen, to be free and still be bound. Okay, hold on. This is going to be deep. There are times when I open up my gate to go in my house and my black Labrador retriever, Smokey, runs out like a speeding bullet, Deacon Brelford. Pew! It's because the gate is open. That's dog sense. <laughs> there are other times... Tanya, I open the gate and he just sits there. As if to say, I don't want to be free today. Sometimes I have to tell him, smoke. There are times I have to get his dog food and pepper it so he come out the gate. Other times he stick his nose out and then just go on, go back in. What's the difference, Pastor Adolph? There's something going on in his mind that keeps him bound even when he's free. Could it be that the same problem that plagues Smokey plagues us? I believe that the Lord opened the door a long time ago. And it's up to you to just walk through your healing, walk through your deliverance, walk through. I submit to you, I wouldn't let the devil set up camp in my mind. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, makes it clear that he is there to set everybody, say, the captives free. In other words, there are people living on lockdown. But wait, you got to feel this. They are in bondage, not behind bars, but they are in bondage because of what they believe. Listen carefully, because this going to be deep. Don't miss this. There are times our belief puts us in bondage. It is because when you believe that what you do saves you, you are now living in the bondage of legalism. It's where you think, if I don't wear a dress, I'm holy. If I don't ever make a mistake, I'm righteous. If I don't wear makeup, I'm going to be in the Holy Ghost. Listen carefully, because all of that is stupidity. To you. If you wear a dress every day, it ain't going to make you holy. It's going to make you be a sinner wearing a dress. If you don't ever wear makeup, it is not going to make you righteous. It's just that day we're going to see what you look like without your makeup on. If you never make another mistake, the one sin you have committed being born is enough to send you to hell. The reason you are in bondage is because some people live in bondage. Religious 
this bondage is the worst bondage in the world. It's made up of rules and regulations by people who are in church who will make you think you got to look like us, act like us, and be like us to act like us, be like us, and want to desire life like us. It is bondage. You got to sit this way. You got to stand that way. You can't have a tattoo. You can't wear this. You can't wear that. I believe the Lord sets you free. And when he does, it's not what's on you. It's who lives in you. It's not where you have been. It is where you are headed. It is not the mistakes you have made. It's the mercy you have discovered. It is not the garbage of your life. It's the grace that looks beyond faults to see needs. It is not your religious view. It is your relationship with God. It is not about your falls. It is about your father's favor. It is not about how many times you come to church. It is about the savior who sets up residence in your soul. It is not about how much you hate. It is about how you have learned to love. It is not about all of that. It is about him. I got to tell y'all a secret. I don't want y'all to forget this. The worst sin I've ever seen at this church was not alcoholism, crack cocaine, adultery, babies born out of wedlock. I've seen the, the, the worst sin I've ever seen at any of y'all is religious legalism. But the Lord broke it one Sunday. Let me tell you what he did. Y'all ready? This going to be messy, but pay attention. One Sunday, Vanessa Jackson, we used to put the chairs out when folk joined church. I used to say, Pastor Wilkerson, the door of the church is open. And we, this lady came down the aisle in a tight, tight, tight black dress. Okay, they missed it. Hey, y'all. One Sunday, this lady came down the aisle in a tight, tight, tight. Tight to the tight, tight, tight to the tight, tight. Woo! The Lord broke us from legalism. Because one Sunday, this lady joined church. Put the chairs down. Jackie, I said, the door is open. And the lady wearing a tight, tight, tight black dress came down the aisle pastor how you know it was tight I saw it like everybody else did I get so tired of people trying to make me be Jesus I'm not him you saw it your husband saw it and your children saw that dress Ooh, I'm about to shout by myself listen that maybe it was a tight and hold on Y'all, to make matters worse, you got to sit down and the chairs are facing the congregation. If you listen to the story, it's a tight, tight, tight dress, which means when she sit down, it's going to curl up. We're going to all see the morning glory. Are you listening? She didn't dress like us. She didn't look like us. She didn't fit in. Wait, hold on. To make it worse, Deacon Cavalier, she had a black jaguar tattooed on her left thigh. Jaguar, row, jaguar, right on the thigh. Come to find out, listen, I'm telling y'all the truth. She was a dancer at that gentleman's club right across the freeway. Yeah, that's where she used to dance. That's where she used to dance. That's where she used to dance. That's where she used to perform. That's where she made it rain. That's where she used to dance. She got saved, got baptized in the Antioch Baptist Church. And then Jean Kyle, something amazing happened. She started witnessing to her friends who were still dancing at the club. Before long, we had a whole row of people at Antioch that came straight from the strip club. What I learned through that was this. Some of my people was upset, looking like, oh my God, they're not our kind of people. But this is what I told them. Ain't none of us die for none of them. And the last time I checked, whosoever will let them come. I need
need about 25 of y'all who are free enough to say whosoever will let him come I gotta quit we have the decree of the king we have the duty of the kinsman the duty of the kinsman is to receive what the king has already said Listen to me. If the king says it, when you receive it, that settles it. But whether you receive it or not, that settles it because the king has already said it. It's up to you to receive it. I think we ought to just do some receiving. Lift your hands right quick and say, God, I receive the fact that I am free. I receive the fact that I am blessed. I receive the fact that I am healed. I receive the fact that I am restored. I receive the fact that the joy of the Lord is my strength. I receive the fact that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I receive the fact that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I receive the fact that I am blessed and not cursed. I receive the fact that I am the head and not the tail. I receive the fact that I am blessed of my Father, held by the Holy Ghost, guided by His Word. I receive it now. We have the deliverance for those who are in the kingdom. Okay, y'all, my time is up, but let me just say this to you. Uh, how would you shout if I told you nothing that hell offers can put you in bondage? How would you respond if I told you that every demonic attempt of the devil to shackle you is going to fail? How would y'all rejoice if I told you that all of your life the enemy has been trying to find ways and methods to shackle you and destroy you but for some reason or another all of them have failed even though some have worked temporarily. Y'all don't know when to shout. Okay, wait. Uh, Deacon Brailsford, I studied this one, this one text immensely, intensely, and here was what I discovered. Angela, I studied it, and I discovered, Tanya, that the word captive, it means those who are held by the tip of a spear. It meant those who were literally held or incarcerated against their will. Are you listening to me? So I asked myself this one question of this text. How do you get all of the people free and it's just Jesus talking? I looked up through the Bible, Deborah. I didn't see a jailbreak. I didn't see anybody that he went to go with loose with a key. I kept trying to find, how was he going to set the captives free? What's the plan, Jesus? Then I realized what happened. You see, in order for you to go free, one or two things have to take place. Either you got to serve your time or somebody has to pay for the time you're supposed to serve. And if somebody pays for the time you're supposed to serve, then you can go free free. Come here right quick. This is the shout for every Baptist in here. Instead of let you suffer and be in bondage, Jesus said, put me in the place of their prison sentence so that when I hang on the cross, I will take their place so that when it comes to the charges that's supposed to be against them, I've already nailed them against me. Picture for a moment all of your trash has caught up with you. All of your garbage, all of your mistakes, all of your your mishap, mess ups, and messed up secrets. Imagine for a moment, because I know some of y'all are a little older now, so you sin less than you used to sin. But woo, if we could have seen you in your 20s, if we could have caught you at 35, if we could have caught you in your early 40s, it would have been a different story. Y'all can say amen here, because I know I'm telling the truth. Imagine all of your dirt has finally caught up.
up with you all the mistakes you have made and the fi- and you discover that you have charges brought against you and you know you are headed to jail if they catch you you leave Beaumont because it's too small you get to Lafayette and the people so you go through Baton Rouge and decide to hide on Bourbon Street in New Orleans, Louisiana trying to mix in with the crowd all of a sudden they find you in front of the daiquiri shop with a with a grenade in your hand help me holy ghost they slap the handcuffs on you take you to the judge and declare publicly death is what you deserve you find yourself walking in the green mile living on death row and every time you hear the footsteps of the bailiff come you panic because you know one of these days is going to be the day your fate is now found you finally one day you turn around when the footsteps stop outside of your doorstep and when you turn it's not the bailiff it's the judge the judge looks at you with his long black robe on and says you're free to go you decide to pick up all of your stuff before the judge changes his mind and while you're walking out you try to find out what the judge is up to the judge is smiling from ear to ear but you are crying because you were bound but now you're free then all of a sudden when you get to the door there's another man walking in in handcuffs you ask the judge who is that man and the judge says oh that's the man that's going to take your place I was telling that man this morning about your predicament and he said I'll take his place then that's when the judge looks at you grabs you by the hand and says but that's no ordinary man He's my only begotten son. He loves you so much that he would be willing to die in your place for you to go free. I wish I had a praying church. Grab somebody by the hand and says, neighbor, I'm free because he died. He died. He died. You're probably sick of hearing it, but every time I say it, I feel better. He died. He died. Ah! He died. He died to set me free. Shake one more neighbor by the hand. Hold your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, because I'm free. I'm going to keep on praying because I'm free. I'm going to keep on fighting because I'm free. I'm going to keep on running. Hold your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, it's not just that he died, but I Whoa, I feel so happy right now. He got up with all power in his hand. Found one more neighbor. Hold that neighbor by the hand and say, Neighbor, I'm free enough to lift up my hands in the sanctuary. I'm free enough to shout hallelujah. I'm free enough to tell you can't nobody do you like Jesus. I'm free enough to keep on running as long as I live. Ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? If you know he's all right, hug your neighbor around the neck and say, neighbor, Satan ain't going to win. The devil can't hold me. My feet are free. My hands are free. He's been anointing me. In fact, I'm anointed for this hour. Can I go ahead and give you the last shout? Be careful hanging around free people because they beat and set you free. They start untying other folk. So if you free, wave your hand. Then touch your neighbor that ain't waved just yet and say, neighbor, be careful hanging around me because my freedom just might rub off. Ain't he all right? Say
said, I feel all right. Hallelujah. Bondage comes from hell. Freedom comes from heaven. We were at the zoo and I kept looking at the ditch and the giraffe. Ditch, giraffe. So I told our kids, come on, let's see the rest of the zoo. I didn't want to see none of the zoo. I just didn't want to be around that giraffe in case he changed his mind. Went around the whole zoo one time and getting ready to leave. Simone said, Deacon Garby, let's go see giraffe one more time. I said, do we have to? We'll go see him one more time. He was still there. When I left, he was there. He was there before I got there. And I got a sneaking suspicion if I go back today, he's still there. Hey, how long you going to be here before you decide? I'm free enough to be free. Wait, wait, how, wait, wait, wait. How, how long is it going to take you to just realize I'm free from this? The generational curse that's on your family, you're free from that. The stuff the devil thought he could shackle you with, you're free from that. The stuff the enemy thought he could hold you down with, you're free from that. Shout this, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Standing to your feet. Find a neighbor's hand to touch. With every head bowed, every heart humbled, I want you to pray this morning for the neighbor's hand you're holding. Pray these petitions right quick. Say, Lord, set my neighbor free from generational curses. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. The bondage is breaking. I promise you it is. Oh, God, I feel your presence in here. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Pray this prayer. Pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, set my neighbor free from physical sickness. Hold on. Pray this. Pray this. Say, do it right now. 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 Pray that. Pray that. Pray that. Pray that. Say, do it now for him. Do it now for him. Do it right now. Do it right now. Do it now for your glory. Do it right now. Tell him. Say, do it now, God. Do it right now. Set them free from physical sickness. Pray that. Pray that. Pray that. Pray that. Pray that. Say this to God. Say, God, let your healing virtue flow. Woo! Pray this last prayer. Then just for the free people, just for the free people. Pray this, say, God, do for my neighbor just a little bit of what you've done for me. Say, God, let my neighbor taste your grace. Let my neighbor feel your freedom. Let my neighbor encounter your power. Let my neighbor experience your presence. Let my neighbor feel your power right now. Say, right now, right now, right now. If you've seen generational demons in your family, some of you have seen it. 
your mama had it, you had it. It's just been running through your family. I want you to be the first free one right quick. And if you've seen curses and attacks on your family, but you will receive the fact that you're the first one to be free. Hold on, I want you to accept this freedom right quick. If you, if you accept the fact, Pastor Adolph, I'm going to accept the freedom my king gave me this morning. I'll be the first one. If nobody else will, I'll be the first. Then squeeze your neighbor's hand. Let them know my freedom begins right now. My freedom is starting at this very moment. Oh, good God Almighty. Listen, if you have seen poverty just run in your family, poverty just this one was broke that one was broke this one is broke that one was on then i want you to believe god right now that the curse of poverty has been removed from you and your children and if you accept that because i believe somebody's about to be blessed in here if you accept that freedom Hold on, if you accept it as it's yours, I want you to just do this. Squeeze your neighbor's hand. It's your way of saying, I'm free from that. I'm free from that. I'm free. If your body has been sick, I don't know who this is for. If your physical anatomy has been sick, but you receive the freedom that comes from the stripes he took on his back. If you receive the fact that you are healed because of the stripes on the master's back back i want you to squeeze your neighbor's hand it's your it's your way of telling everybody around you i accept my freedom i accept my freedom i accept it i accept it if he bought it i want it if you're here this morning and you can say pastor adolf i have struggled privately with many things People look at me and don't know the demons I've had to deal with. They don't know about the demon of worry and the demon of anxiety and the demon of doubt. I've passed the eight off. I've struggled in so many ways, so many places. I can't just open and tell people about my struggle. But this morning, I accept the liberty that my Christ has bought for me. If he took my place, I want to stand in his and I want to stand free live free and this morning I accept the freedom he has purchased for me I will no longer live in the bondage of worry anxiety distress doubt and mistrust if that's you don't say a word squeeze your neighbor's hand it's a way of saying I'm free and it starts right now it starts right now it starts right now lastly if you're here, you say, Pastor Adolf, I need a church home that's going to teach me the Bible like you're teaching right now. I'm attending where I'm going, but I'm not growing where I've been attending. And I need somebody to open a Bible and make it come to life and feed my soul. Then here's what I want you to do. Don't say a word. Just squeeze your neighbor's hand. It says, I accept the membership, the friendship, and the relationship the man of God just extended. Now, Father, I pray for these who are coming because today is a difference maker day. They may have come in bondage, but they're going to live with, they're going to leave with deliverance. And today, Lord, I thank you for changing lives. I thank you for rearranging futures and rearranging destinies. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. If your neighbor squeezes your hand, don't lift it. Just bring them to this altar as fast as you can. I want to pray over everybody here. Bring them, bring them, bring them. If your neighbor squeezes your hand, bring that neighbor as quickly as you can. Walk them with passion. I hope you're walking sick people towards me. I hope you're walking your children towards me. I hope you're walking your family towards me. I hope you're walking them. Walk them, walk them, walk them, walk them. Come as quickly as you can. I want you to walk with Here you go. Here they come. Here they come. Here this one comes. Here comes another. Come as fast as you can. Come as fast as you can.
thankful for these who've come this morning. Uh, listen. With as many preachers as in my family is, I have people that are in bondage to different things. Uh, I'm not ashamed to share my story. I have people, Sister Sales, that's addicted to alcohol. People that's addicted to prostitution in my own family. People that's addicted to all kinds of dope and drugs. And you know what? They're not in church. They don't even go to church. They're the part of my family that we see them at the family reunion. We just say, hey, and keep going. But I believe in the power of prayer. I believe that people can stand in the gap for you. Hold on, I got to hurry because... Because this is about spiritual freedom this morning. If you know people in your family that are in bondage to two things, listen. Either an infirmity where they are sick or an addiction where they are bound. And you're not at this altar. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to come stand at the altar and accept their freedom on their behalf. I want you to stand in the gap for people that you love. And hold on. I don't want you to come like you're just not believing. I want you to walk like, hold on. I'm going for their freedom this Sunday. Either infirmed or addicted Rush to this altar Like you believe God for their freedom The Bible says He was wounded for our transgressions Bruised for his iniquity The chastisement of our peace Was upon him And with his stripes We are already healed I want you to come and pray with me We're through We've got five more minutes Come quickly neighbor's hand listen to me carefully I believe in my heart listen carefully I want you to hear what I'm about to say I don't want to yell I want you to just hear God hear this the people who walk down this aisle you're already free you just discovered it your freedom is not new it just took faith to receive it. So I want you right quick to just say thank you to God for the freedom he's already purchased. In fact, hold on, lift your hands right quick. This is for those who just received the fact that you heal. You received the fact that you've been restored. You received the fact that he's already opened the gate for you. You receive it. I want you to just spend 10 seconds and just thank God like you crazy, like you already have it, like it's already done. Do that, do that, do that, do that, do that. That don't sound free to me. I want you to sound free. I want you to, I want you to sound like you're free. I want you to act like it's already done. I want you to celebrate this like you're already free. I want you to celebrate it like no pill can do it, no cream can make it happen. That the Lord did it for you because he wanted to. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. 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 We've been bought with a price. Hallelujah. You died to save me.
moment of intercession, find a neighbor's hand. We got to go find a neighbor's hand. The enemy thinks he can keep people who are not here this morning. But there are people standing in the gap for people who are infirmed or addicted. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to pray for those to receive their freedom on their behalf. You can't receive it for them if you don't have it. So this prayer is only for the pre-people praying for folk that are shackled. You ready for the next 10 seconds, 15 seconds? In fact, for those of you who can see the person you're praying for right quick, just shout their name, shout their name, shout. Y'all didn't open your mouth. I want you to call the name of the person you're standing in the gap for. Open your mouth and shout their name. Now you go, open your mouth and cry their name. Cry it, cry it, call it, call it, call it, call it. Call those names. If it's a brother, a sister, a niece, a nephew, a husband, an aunt, a grandfather, a grandmother, a friend, call their name, call their name, call their name, call their name, call it, call it, call it. Because we're about to call another name that's greater than that name. It's another name that has healing in that name. I know you just call their name but right now we don't call another name that has healing wrapped around it it has power that comes from within it i want you to lift your hands right quick and when you call this name i want you to picture them well and free and strong and delivered i want you to call the name are you ready call the name jesus Woo! call the name jesus Shackles are falling. I said shackles are falling. I said shackles are falling. I said shackles are falling. Call the name Jesus. Son of the living God. Shackles are falling. Blinded eyes are being opened. Tumors are shrinking. Pipes are being thrown to the ground. Lives are changing. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost. Lift your hand right quick. And for those who are free enough to do it, call the name Jesus like this. Shout the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Receive it. Lift your hands. Tell God I receive it. I receive it. Take your right hand. Put it on your neighbor's shoulder. Tell that neighbor, say neighbor. My family is already blessed. My family's already healed. But this morning, I'm praying for yours. Pray for that family. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, he's a healer, 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 heal
by your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Switch sides, switch sides, switch sides, switch sides. Take your hand, lay it on your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm believing God for you. Tell them, say, neighbor, I don't know what your faith is like, but my faith is strong. Tell them, and I'm believing God for your family's freedom, for your healing, for your family. I'm praying for God to do what he's done for me, for you. Pray, pray, pray. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him, I love Jesus, Jesus. Lift your hands. We're through. I got to quit. Lift your hands. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the broke people. There's a new king in town who's going to give recovery of sight to the blind, to heal the broken heart, to set free those who are bound. This morning I declare for our benediction There is no bondage here in this place I want you to lift your hands like you're free I want you to thank God for your freedom And for the freedom of everybody around you Open your mouth in this house Stamp what God has done today With one word, hallelujah from falling to the only wise God you shall ever, 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 ever know. To our King, immortal, invisible, and eternal. To him who sits high and looks low. May grace, might, majesty, peace, power, prosperity, and dominion be his forever and forever and forever. Before we, man, I want to stay in church right now. Good God. Before we, before we sing this last word. There are some who need to come and say, I want to be a part of what God is doing here. The way you do it is simple. All of my deacons, counselors, and clergy, y'all wave at God's people. This is how you join. We don't say the door is open. We just say, hey, come find the hand of another believer. They'll tell you how to become a part. And if you've never, ever experienced our Jesus, if you don't know him, see these hands? Find them one more time. See these? Come and find it. Hey, y'all, say this. I'm free. And I receive that. It means amen. It means so be it. It means that settles it. It means it's true. It means I concur with it. Sing it with us. Oh, amen. Hug your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I've been blessed. God bless you. Go in peace. You are excused.